now in this case we are going to look at all the cases the seven areas uh, to start with let us look at uh, titration another name is volumetric analysis so titration is actually determining the end point of the burette contents that react with a fixed usually 25 ml or 25 cubic centimeters from a pipette that is uh, the conical flask content so we are determining the end point from a, pu a burette contents that react with a fixed contents in a conical flask usually it is 25 we also have some pipettes that are the capacity is 20. So as evidence, titration of actual done examining body required the candidate to record the burette readings before and after the titration. For candidates, burette readings must be recorded in a titration tables, that's for KCC candidates, in the format provided by the Kenya National Examination Council. As evidence, all the titration done and examined by, uh, examined by the NEC require the candidate to record their burette readings before and after the, to complete the titration table in a certain uh, format. Look at the example below. For instance, here we are having a, a table format that is normally used. Here we have the final burette reading and then we have the initial burette reading. Then you have the volume used. So, for instance, if the final was 24 and the initial was 0, when you compute the 2 by subtracting the volume used, you find that it is 24.0 cubic centimeters. And then when you calculate the average, you just sum and divide by the number. That is 3. Now, as evidence of understanding the degree of accuracy of burettes, all readings must be recorded to a decimal point. And the decimal point that is recognized is within 0 0.2 of the school value. That is plus or minus 0 0.2. So the school value is a teacher's reading presented to the examining body based on the concentration of solution whereby the teacher will prepare the concentration for the students and then do the practical as per the instructions. In this case, evidence is provided that is for average, average reading that is within 0 0.1 of the school value. I'm going to do examples so that we can see what exactly it means. The calculations involved of the titration require candidates thorough practice mastery on the, the relation between the mole, the molar mass, the mole ratios, concentrations, morality, so the mathematical principles are applied. That's the first mathematical principles, a very, very useful, which many candidates forget. For instance, 
<coughs> all the calculations must be done with the fourth decimal point unless they divide fully to a lesser decimal never round off your answers just as a wrap up thermochemistry that is the energy we define energy as the capacity to do work or the ability to do work and it's measured in joules or kilojoules before i go further when we mention kilojoules i want you to see that the k is small k and the j is capital so this k the first one is, a, is supposed to be small but the j is capital so the changes take place with either the absorption endothermic or the evolution of heat exothermic endothermic changes show an absorption of heat by a fall in temperature or a drop and exothermic changes show evolution by a rise in temperature so when temperatures drop our entropy change is supposed to be positive and when temperature rise it is a negative we normally use a thermometer to measure this we either have a colored thermometer that's using alcohol or a colorless using mercury and as a as a student you're supposed to practice so that you can see the thin capillary so for accuracy candidates in the same practical session should use the same type of thermometer don't mix if you are 25 students use the same thermometer because your readings are going to be marked using the one marking scheme so if you use varied thermometers one is using alcohol another one is using mercury or from a different manufacturers there might be a slight deviations so a drop in temperature is movement of a thermometer level downwards and a rise is the movement of a therm thermometer level upwards it means there are physical changes that may which involve melting freezing fusion boiling and the vaporization the chemical changes mainly involve displacement dissolving and neutralization for instance to determine the boiling point of water that's an experiment the procedure goes measure 20 centimeter cubic or cubic centimeter of tap water into a 50 cubic centimeter of glass beaker determine and record its temperature heat the water on a strong bunsen burner flame and record its temperature after every 30 seconds for four minutes then you plot a graph of temperature against time when you look at the readings 0 is 25 30 45 60 80 the reading is going up 96 97 98 however when you look at the rate at which the temperature is increasing initially the temperature was increasing very fast and then reached a point it was almost a constant and then it rose by one degree and another degree if we want to plot our graph temperature against time that is uh, the graph it is almost making a flat on top then when we are having a flat or it stops to go up that is our boiling point so from the graph show and determine the boiling point of water note that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level and the one atmosphere but boils below 100 at a higher altitudes for example the sample above are from Kiriari Girls High School Embu 
a count on the slopes of Mount Kenya. So water here will boil at 96. So if a student at Kiriari Gas gets 96, we don't expect another student in Mombasa whereby they are at the sea level to get 96. For them, they may get higher than 96 because Mombasa is at lower altitudes. Now, the mass of water equal to density times volume. So the second question was um, calculate the molar heat of vaporization of this water that has been heated, the molar heat of vaporization. So we start by getting the mass of water, that is the density of water times the volume. We measure 20 cubic centimeters of water, and the density of water is 1 grams per cubic centimeters. That gives us 0 0.02 kilograms. For us to get the quantity of heat produced, that is the mass of heat of water, mass of water times specific heat capacity of water times the temperature change. Temperature change is going to be 96 minus 25. And then the heat of vaporization is going to be the quantity of heat divided by the uh, molar mass of water, which is or just vaporization for one mole. Now, to determine another example, the melting point of candle wax, you weigh five grams of candle wax into a boiling tube, heat it strongly until it melts. You insert a thermometer and remove the boiling tube from the flame. You start continuously determine the re and record the temperature every after 30 seconds for four minutes and then you plot a graph. <coughs> Once you plot a graph, this is what you expect. So it is an opposite of the boiling point because the graph goes in a negative gradient, the curve. And where it is a flat, that's where we are going to have our melting point. So these processes, they appear uh, very, very simple, but they are tricky. They need practice and reading between the lines. So in my next lesson, we are going to look at specific practicals uh, and how you do the calculation. So I want you to watch for the second video and keep on subscribing to this as channel Bongo Macheri Fred channel. There are over 1,000 chemistry videos to watch. If you want a certain topic, you want to be made available, just comment below. Say, I need topic X, Y, Z. In the next five minutes, I'll post it. Thank you.